I just wanted to say hello to everyone. Thank you for coming to the premiere of my film. I'm so sorry I can't be with you tonight. I hope you enjoy it. And I wanted to thank Vicky and Holly for coming and uh, say how happy I, I am to have worked with both of you. And, and I hope you enjoy the film. And I'm with you in spirit. Merci beaucoup. Filth and wisdom. Got two sides of the same coin. I'd never even contemplate taking my clothes off for a bunch of dirty old men. I knew you were a filthy slut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, I've always loved movies, and, but I never thought that I had the experience or that I was, you know, I was trained to be a dancer and then I became a singer, and I never thought that I could do such a thing. Um, but then I made so many videos and started making documentaries about my life and I spent so much time around filmmakers that eventually I got up the courage to say, well, why can't I make a film? Okay. Will someone please tell me why I still don't have a job? Maybe I can try. Let's see. It's not 1800s anymore. We're not in Russia. And nobody gives a fuck about ballet. <laughs> yeah, we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself, fucking Florence Nightingale. <laughs> I'm this far away from transcontinental superstardom. And I'm this far away from telling the rest of your band what you do to make money. Because that's who I'm attracted to, pe creative people. And essentially, it is about the struggle of an artist. Do you have a costume? I have a leotard. Oh, dear. Knickers and bra will do. Right. Um, do you have a changing room? No. No? Come on. Allez, allez. All the things that I love are in the movie. You have, uh, you have the writer who loves his books, who's listening to Maria Callas singing Costa Diva, and I love opera, and, I, and you have the ballet dancer, and I was trained as a dancer, and you have the punk rocker, philosopher, and, um, and you have Juliet's character who's, you know, has a painful childhood background and a problem with her father. And, you know, she wants to run away from it all and save the starving children of Africa. And, you know, so, I mean, there's, I'm making fun of all the characters, but also I, I love all the characters and I have a, a connection to them. If I have to choose, I would say Eugene, because he has the biggest transformation in the end, because um, the biggest evolution of his character, because he starts off and he's, what is he doing? He's beating people up for a living, right? By the end of the movie, he's getting to say what he wants to say and do what he wants to do on stage, and he's taken the art of someone else, the writing of someone else, and somehow translated it into music and he's fallen in love so i relate to him the most <laughs> did you take your medication yeah did you you know in my country there's a saying if you want to reach the sky fuck a duck and try to fly if you if your ship comes in it's your responsibility to share what you have with other people, yeah. Feeling good is just as, uh, what does he say? Feeling good is just as easy as feeling bad. So when your ship comes in, oh, and happiness is contagious. So when your ship comes in, yeah, uh, you have to get as many people on board as possible. I, I don't want a sad ending. I, I don't mind a sad journey, as long as there's a happy ending. Well, it's a historical story about a um, a love story about two people that really existed in history. I'm not going to tell you their names, and um, from the past. And it's a, a fictional story about a girl who lives in New York who's obsessed with this love story, and she thinks that if she had that, she would be happy. So, and then of course she goes on this journey and and finds out that in fact, it wasn't what it was 
you know, it wasn't what it was portrayed to be, and that, you know, that kind of love doesn't really exist. Um, but in that realization, she does find love, and it's about, you know, the cult of celebrity and uh, lots of things that I have lots of experience with. I love poetry, and I read it all the time, and, and obviously literature is really important to me. I can't imagine life without books. I'm just about to finish a book called The Last Lecture. Have you heard of it? It's about a, it's about a computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon who finds out, it's a true story, that um, he's 47 years old, he has he's three children, he's married, and he finds out he has cancer, and he only has three months to live. So he goes, he starts to give lectures at his college where he's the professor, and they're called the last lecture, and he dies three months later, and then all of his lectures are put into a book. And all of his lectures are about believing in your dreams and appreciating life and how fleeting time is. And uh, it's very inspiring. If you want to reach the sky, fuck a duck and try to fly. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> uh, scenes, great characters, uh, great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, if I could say, so far from the universe you used to, to create for you, it changes? So far? Yeah, so. Mm. I don't know. I think everything that I love is in the movie. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of music in the movie. Mm -hmm. And dance is in the movie. And literature, and the love of literature and books is in the movie. And being concerned about children who are suffering in the world are, is in the movie. So in a way, I mean, it's me and an extension, another extension of me. The movie is very interesting because it's sometimes uh, great and hard. Yes, and serious. Serious and mm -hmm. sometimes uh, humoristic. Yeah. Uh, like in uh, some French films, about one special, but maybe uh, Agnes Varda, I don't know if yes. you know. Yes, Cleo from Cleo. 5 to 7, yeah. You, you know I love that film. You, you love that film. I love it. It's brilliant. This little music, you know, yeah. not sad, but not... Uh, yeah, it's melancholic, it's, it's kind of funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you're fond of uh, French cinema, you love that? Yes, very much so. <laughs> and the surprising thing is you, you made a lot if I could say, a low-profile movie, no big budget, no special effects, um, because it, it was easier for you, or you, you need to Well, I've never done it. Uh, yes, because I've never done it before. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to waste money, and I don't want to waste people's time, and I want to learn how to make films in a quiet way, because that's how you should learn. In a quiet way. Yeah, without everybody you spend a lot of money and you have big movie stars and everyone has expectations and everyone's wa watching you and it's too much pressure. Uh, what kind of director are you? Could you define uh, very directive or? Very, very hands-on, attention to detail, um, obsessed with everything. Um, yeah, completely well, there. Sorry? Completely there. Completely. Because this was your first time, your first experience. Do you feel, do you experience fear the first day? Or what kind of fear? I think my nerves were mostly when I was doing location scouting with my crew, with the, the, the camera operator and the cinematographer and some of the crew guys, because there are all these kind of macho English guys and who am I and, you know, I'm this little chick, and they think I'm a singer, and they some of them have worked with my husband, and I didn't know if they would respect me, and so I was like, yes, I see the camera over here, and no, that's not how I want to shoot the scene at all, and you know, I was nervous that they would take me seriously, but once I start talking, and you know, I realized that all you have to do is show you people that you know what you want. If you have a clear idea, they'll follow you. So that was when I was the most nervous. So you get respect, you get the English press. I think it's the time said um, that in an artistic way uh, you simply bypass 
Gary Ritchie's autistic ambition. Ah, well, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. We, we're, we, we're very different filmmakers. I mean, in a way, I mean, guys, like, he makes action movies. You know, they're very slick, and the editing is really fast, and he's, he knows so much about new technology and how to move a camera around. I, I, I'm, I don't know anything about any of that. I just, I just want to tell stories, and they're usually quite emotional and sentimental, and that's not something he's very interested in. So it's a good thing. Very sentimental. Yeah. Mm. Uh, tell me about the, the characters. Uh, you said you fall in love with them. Mm. Uh, What's the part of you in each of them, beginning with Eugene, for example? Well, Eugene is he's a very provocative. He says things just to poke, wake people up. You know, he has a heart, but he's also very provocative. And, you know, he's, he's like a punk rock philosopher, and I, I like, I see myself in him. And we got along very well, and he was excellent from beginning to end in terms of being open and improvising and taking the words and fooling around and changing the orders of things. I, I really loved working with him. And I see myself, obviously, in Holly's character because I started out as a dancer and I moved to New York. And after years and years of training, I realized that I was never going to make a living as a dancer. And it's a terrible depression <laughs> that you can sink into. Um, and then, of course, Juliet's character, you know, her. Obviously, she has issues with her family and her childhood and her father, and she has a lot of pain inside of her, and she wants to take that pain and save the rest of the world. And, you know, there's an aspect of me in her as well. So I, I say that all three of them are aspects of me. She sometimes looks like you, like a sister. Yes, I think that's true. She looks like my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Call it. She's beautiful. But she's broke. Like, like Eugene said, humanity is divided into two categories. People who want to be quite beautiful, mm -hmm. and people trying to be bad. bad. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, I'm trying to be good, but I'm perfectly aware that I might possibly be bad. <laughs> Sometimes. When you dedicate a song to uh, the Pope, the Pope, for example, is yeah. it good or is it bad? Or is it, how, how was it perceived? Obscenité et vertu. Obscenité et vertu. You seem to prefer movies now than making movies. Do you try it or just? No, I don't prefer. I like it all. I you want it all. all. You, want, you want it all? Yes. <laughs> I will have it all. <laughs> you don't have it all? I will. I will? Yeah. Uh, why is it so... Why, sometimes it seems harder for you to, to succeed in, in movies, for example. As an actress, it was. Mm -hmm. Should I say it was? Or should I say it is difficult? It was. Well, yeah, because I don't want to be an actress no. anymore. No, I think no. it's much better to be a director. Make up that blank I remake. No. no. Or maybe I'll play the, hum the Humphrey Bogart's character. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, um, because I, I like being a storyteller. I'm much more comfortable in that role. And I think my persona is too big for people to let go of as an actress in a film. So, yeah. Okay. What is your first movie ever? You remember to go to a theater with a uh, dad, maybe? Oh, I don't remember my father taking me to the movies. Um, no, I don't remember movies until I was older. And I went to college, and uh, they had a foreign film cinema program. And that's when I started to see um, Fellini and Antonioni and Pasolini and Visconti and Godard and René and Truffaut and, you know. One movie in could be a, a masterpiece for you, one or two? Or of those films, you mean? We're in Italy, for example. La Strada. La Strada. Yeah, that would be one. And um, what's another one? 
also a, a movie that I saw a, a really long time ago, and uh, it was, I don't know how you pronounce the title. L'Atalant? La, 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 yeah, Jean Vigo. Do you know that? Yeah. I took the, the name of the girl and used it in my book, Dita Parlo. That was my, uh, my pseudonym. <laughs> I just have a, a present for you. Oh, good. So Italian, so movie-made. Is it a movie? <laughs> and so it would be perfect in your kitchen, maybe. An apron? Sorry? An apron. It I is an apron. <gasps> Fantastic. Oh, my God, look. It's, it's a Fellini mm -hmm. film. It's La Dolce Vita in the Trevi Fountain. When I do all my cooking, I shall wear it, yes. Thank you. That's nice. I like that. OK. Thank you very much. Nice Thank to you. meet you. I could wear this as a costume without anything on underneath. Perfect.